to see today's photo, go to mtforchrist.org or follow me, M.T. Clark, on Facebook or Twitter. Today's photo of a of the Yona Mountain viewed from Duke's, tree, Duke's Creek, located in Chattahoochee, Okani National Forest in Georgia, comes to us from Fred Dimmick, who shared this scene on social media back on March uh, 15th. Yona is between the cities of Cleveland and Helen, and it is the Cherokee word for bear. Well, it's Wednesday, and I am sharing Fred's photo of Yona, mountain to represent our arrival at hump day and it is only a coincidence that i had one bear of a day yesterday and last night word on the street is there's a stomach bug going around and it seemed to pay me a visit throughout the day yesterday with feelings of dehydration and the need to use the facilities more far more than normal and last night uh the condition caused me to toss and turn as it made a noisy exit from my body um, I think, I think I am past the worst of it, but would take, uh, whatever prayers you would like to offer for complete healing as I prepare to go to work and we'll meet later today to do the last scheduled freedom appointment for this season's freedom in Christ course. Uh, you can offer up prayers for Fred too, as he has far more serious health concerns as he shared that the biopsy on his prostate was completed four days ago so prayers for healing and good reports for fred in jesus name amen uh fred has also recently shared other day trips and that he was completing some work on his new house in murphy north carolina showing all his friends that life doesn't stop just because you have a health concern and even though i am tired and am prayerfully on the way to a full recovery I am up and at them this morning, just like normal, because my lifestyle of faith doesn't stop just because an illness tries to derail me. So, let's keep this faith train rolling uh, by continuing our current series, The 40-Day Journey with Diedrich Bonhoeffer, with Day 37, on this 37th day of Lent. We have also arrived at Holy Wednesday, or Spy Wednesday, when Christ was anointed with the ex that expensive spike Nard, which apparently was too much for Judas, who then in turn conspired to betray him. I didn't know it was called Spy Wednesday, and so I am sharing a link on the blog for those who are curious about this fourth day of Holy Week um, to learn all about it. And that's uh, from our friends at gotquestions.org. Um, let's see, it's, it's, just a, it's just another way to know more about our faith, uh, which is our intention. Uh, with uh, the 40-day journey with Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And as a reminder, uh, and as we will say each day of this journey, we take this path to mark the season of Lent and to draw closer to God in anticipation of the celebration of Easter, knowing that it will, if we take this journey of repentance seriously, we will not only see the days and seasons change, the Lord will use it to change us too. Uh, you can sign up to get this devotional yourself by going to the Bible Gateway link on the blog. Uh, okay, without further ado, we enter into day 37, and they do have a note, uh, basically, before they give Bonhoeffer's um, passage, and that note, in parentheses, tells us, Bonhoeffer's view of a life among enemies was formed in the Nazi Germany of the 1930s, a situation that was becoming increasingly hostile to Christians. Um, and Bonhoeffer writes, The Christian cannot simply take for granted the privilege of living among other Christians. Jesus Christ lived in the midst of his enemies. In the end, all his disciples abandoned him. On the cross, he was all alone, surrounded by criminals and jeering crowds. He had come from for the express purpose of bringing peace to the enemies of God. Christians, too, belong not in the seclusion of a cloistered life, but in the midst of enemies. There they find their mission, their work. End quote. In the biblical wisdom they pair with Bonhoeffer's passage is from Matthew 10, 16, uh, where Jesus said, See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not, we don't live in Nazi Germany, but uh, our society is increasingly hostile towards Christianity. Um, um, so 
that shouldn't be much of a surprise. So it's rather fitting um, for our days and times uh, that this should come up. Anyway, we move along to the questions to ponder. And the first question they ask is, how would you define the enemies Christians are to live in the midst of? I guess I would define the enemies that we are to live in the midst of as anyone who has not made Jesus their Lord and Savior. The concept of coexistence is big in our society, which essentially is the belief uh, that it doesn't matter uh, what you believe in. Uh, and the Christian should not sit in... Yeah, let's back that up, which essentially is the belief that it doesn't matter what you believe in as long as you live in peace. But the truth is that it does matter what we believe in, and the Christian should not sit idly by to maintain the peace when his non-Christian neighbors are on the road to perdition. The answer to the question, can't we all just get along, should be a decisive no for the Christian, as Jesus didn't leave that option available to us, as he called his followers to go and make disciples in all the earth. While I would never condone violence, I would say our faith is one of confrontation. We have to present Jesus Christ crucified and beg the question, do you believe this? Uh, because no matter what kind of peace we can forge on earth, it would be positively unloving to not share the truth of who Christ is and what he had to teach about life and death. And the next question is, what is the mission or work of Christians toward these enemies? Our mission is to love them and pray that they, the Lord would use us to bring them into the kingdom through faith in Jesus. Our mission is to try to save them by sharing the truth and living according to God's word to show our faith is real and effective in bringing meaning, purpose, and peace to our lives. The next question uh, is, Jesus said, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. Does this fit with the reading from Bonhoeffer for today? How or how not? Uh, Bonhoeffer echoes the sentiments of Jesus' teachings to love our enemies uh, by encouraging Christians to live in their midst. Um, not, not to live in a, in a cloistered life of physical and spiritual isolation. Um, Bonhoeffer states that Christians find their mission in the midst of our enemy. Our work is to represent the kingdom of God and to welcome others in. That moves us along to the psalm fragment for today, and it comes from Psalm 23, 5, and 6, uh, where the word of the Lord says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And yeah, we... The Lord prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies, so we are to live in their midst and to be bold and courageous and brave to, uh, to share uh, the truth about Jesus Christ and uh, the gospel that gives life. And we move along to journal ref uh, the journal reflection section of today's uh, um, study, and the first prompting is, as a Christian, do you find yourself living in the midst of enemies? How or how not? If so, who are they? Uh, how do you feel about them? I have shared previously uh, about having suffered loss and persecution for my faith. So I would say, yes, I do find myself living in the midst of enemies. Who are they? Uh, friends, family, co-workers? Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, a little bit of everybody. Um Unless we have isolated ourselves from society, I would say we all live in the midst of our enemies. I have suffered rejection and not-so-subtle insults for my faith at times, so that's how I know that I am among enemies. However, I remember the days when I wasn't saved, and I know where my enemies are coming from. They don't have any answers to the big questions and are following the world's paradigms or recipes that are supposed to lead to a happy life which for the most part is defined through varying degrees of selfish indulgence. So, instead of anger, I have increasing sorrow and compassion for those who don't have Jesus as their Savior. Thinking they are wise, they have chosen a path that leads to destruction. 
so I feel sorry for them and pray that the Lord reveals himself to them. And the next prompting is, what do your what do you understand to be your personal mission or work in the midst of these enemies? My personal mission, as I try to put forth uh, through this blog and podcast, is to dispel the ignorance surrounding the Christian faith as a religion and to encourage people to seek the Lord and to follow him with every fiber of their being as a disciple of Jesus Christ. To echo that scene in Gone with the Wind, where, speaking of the land, Gerald O'Hara told his daughter Scarlet that it was the only thing worth fighting for, the only thing worth worth working for and the only thing worth dying for um, because it was the only thing that lasts that's the kingdom of God that's our faith the only thing worth working for the only thing worth fighting for and the only thing worth dying for because it is the only thing that lasts and it should be our mission in life to work for, to fight for and to die for it And that brings us to the end of our study. Uh, As the prayer for today uh, is presented here, let's, uh, let's pray it. Lord Jesus, give me the faith, the courage, and the love to live faithfully in the midst of enemies, as you did. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As always, I invite, uh, well, that's the end of day 37. I can't believe we're almost done. Um, And, you know... Day 38, 39, 40 um, is coming quick. Um, so what a journey of faith. And I found it to be a good study so far. So um, certainly engaging. Anyway, uh, as always, we, we also share, uh, we invite all to go to mtforchrist.org, where we always share insights from prominent Christian theologians and counselors to assist our brothers and sisters in Christ with their walk. Today, we continue sharing from A.W. Pink's The Sovereignty of God, Chapter 12. Uh, the value of this doctrine, and today we present point number five, uh, that it affords a sense of absolute security. So, if you don't feel secure in your faith, um, or don't have have a sense of security, go to mtforchrist.org and check out today's uh, passage from uh, A.W. Pink, so you can, you can understand what absolute security feels like. And uh, that's, that's the thing. We shouldn't guess whether or not we're, we're in God's kingdom. If we, uh, you know, speak with our, if we speak and make Jesus our Lord and Savior, we will be saved. And uh, we are just to have faith in that and understand that we're in a state of grace. We are saved. And um, the next part after salvation is to live according to what our teacher, Jesus Christ, is taught, and um, to share the gospel with other people. So, And to do it in hostile environments, as you know, the world is hostile to the Christian message. And we, but we are not called to, to hide and run away from opposition. We are to stand for our faith and, and tell people the truth in hopes that uh, the Lord will use it to bring them into the kingdom. Uh, as always, we also uh, encourage people to check out our discipleship classes that we've shared on the podcast and the uh, our YouTube channel for Victory Over the Darkness, The Bondage Breaker, and Freedom in Christ, as uh, those, those are all based on the Word of God and the work of Dr. Neil Anderson, and it teaches you about who you are in Christ, about the spiritual forces of darkness, and how to experience your freedom. Um, so we invite you to check those out. Uh, as always, we also encourage a study of a daily study of God's Word, um, and we do that through the podcast by uh, providing our weekly Bible study with Arthur and Susanna Sincati. Um You can find our Bible studies on the podcast and our YouTube channel under the heading "Bible Study with the Sincatis." Well, I am, uh, I am, I am a little tired this morning, so we're gonna wrap it up with some prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for another day in your kingdom. Lord, we just pray for you to go before us today. Um, Give us the strength and resilience we need uh, to face the challenges of the today. And uh, Lord, we pray for anyone listening or reading today's message, that they would be blessed by you, and that you would come alongside them in their prayer requests. And Lord, we just pray for you to go before us, open our eyes to the things you want us to see, and uh, lead our paths in the things you would have us do. 
says, Lord, all we want to do is represent your kingdom. And Lord, uh, if, if, you, if, you'd, if you'd like, we, we would love it if you would use us today to bring someone else in. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. And we pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.